Hello, my name is Steffi, and I'm a UX mentor here at STEMAway. I am actually a graduate of the STEMAway program back in 2021, so the second year of interns. Um, and AI code assistance, a very wonderful tool, a very useful tool, as we have seen from Colin and Delshan. However, you can have all these wonderful tools, but if you can't really use them properly, then what's the point of having them? So my job as a user experience designer in research is to find the pain points. So why are these tools maybe not working to the best of their ability? Why are they not actually helping people get all this code done, help find all this data, et cetera, and then find ways to improve it. So how do we do that? Well, you have to actually talk to the people who use these tools. So I'm going to be doing a little mock interview with Colin and Delshan. So first step is just getting basic information, which we already got from their introductions. Uh, so we've learned the tools that they use and also what they use them for. So now let's dig a little deeper. So I am just going to start off with Colin. So how do you feel like these code assistants have increased your productivity and how have they done so? I don't think they've increased my productivity. So I think in general, I see some value in some of the snippets that have been generated for incredibly narrow tasks. So taking a step back in my day-to-day -day workflow, because I'm in a research environment, by design, right, by desire, what we produce should be slightly innovative, right? It, it should be code that doesn't exist somewhere. So often I find myself relying on a set of functions that I've written that do very basic things, right, where you're fitting the logistic regression and you're picking the optimal threshold. That's exactly the kind of task that is perfectly presented through these tools. But I actually already have a library of these things that I've been accumulating myself before generative AI became as popular as it was. So for most of my other workflows when I'm writing code, I find that the code is too abstract and too complex. Too many operations are being chained together to get useful suggestions out of things like GitHub Copilot. But that's my personal day-to-day -day experience thus far. So you're just to spit that back and just make sure I get it. You're saying that it just helps you maybe solidify what you already have, just confirm what you already have, but in terms of maybe making any huge leaps or such, not as much as maybe people would think. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. I think that it's more of a distraction than it is an addition in my productivity because I am somebody that's very specific about the type of IDE, the environment, the visual patterns of what I'm seeing. And so to me, if I'm going to reject or ignore, let's say 95% of suggestions that are popping up, it's really just a distraction. It's actually detrimental to my workflow. So there are those 5%, 10% cases where there's a utility, let's say fitting a model, or as we just saw with Dilshan, web scraping. I always know that web scraping is important for getting data, but it's one of those things that's tough to do. You know, Oftentimes it's one of the more laborious aspects of building your data set. So that's a situation where I might leap to try and use these tools to get a web scraper in place. Because even though it's a process I do a lot, I actually don't have a rich set of utilities that handle that already. So in my work, yeah, if it's something that I've addressed before, odds are I've already built that piece of repurposable code. And if I haven't ever seen it before, odds are things like Copilot actually can't address the problem yet. And I think that my attitude will change over time, obviously, as the corpus of code that is going into these things is increasing and expanding. And there become opportunities where you could fine tune this on your own code, right? So I could easily see it becoming useful as it becomes a little bit more customized to the type of code that I write. But as it stands right now, that's my overall sentiment. Interesting. Okay. I was not expecting that, but I like that answer. Dilshan, um, not sure if you use these same types of assistance. Um, if you if you do, great. But if not, do you feel the same kind of sentiment or do you feel that maybe it is more beneficial to the kind of work you do? Okay, so since I'm a student, a lot of the stuff I do isn't too difficult and people have done before. So tools like ChatGPT um, or GitHub Copilot, they really help in the process of developing code for me because you know, I know I'm sure Colin is working more complex things which are a little bit more custom. But for me, I work on some, I usually work on stuff which is more basic and Copilot can help me speed up the process of finding out how to do some, some stuff. And ChatGPT is really useful when I'm like, when I'm trying to search for a solution, 
I'll, I'll often end up in places where like they give me the code, but I don't know what it does. And ChatGPT is really good at explaining that for me. And I, but usually I use Copilot a lot for just doing basic stuff, which I might need help with. And if I could just build on top of Dilshan's answer there. Sure. So I love that answer, Dilshan. And I also think you're doing some very complex things, having seen the work that you put out. But what I would try and make a distinction between is complexity and abstraction in terms of the chain of operations that has to go into code that's being generated. So oftentimes something can be complex and difficult to understand, but succinct to write in code. It only requires a singular function, a singular set of operations. Often what I do is not complex in that it's not necessarily hard to understand what I'm looking for. It just requires a chain of operations, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 steps long. And that's actually where we see a lot of these automated generative AI assistants struggle is it's not that you know we're asking it to invent something brand new and solve some scientific problem. But when you start requesting or you have data pipelines that have so many intertwined pieces and the things that you're trying to type require many compound operations, I think that's where things get challenging. And like Dilshan mentioned, if you're a student, this is not a big deal. This is actually a good thing because you can focus on small atomic operations and learn what single functions do. As you begin to work in the real world, you become responsible for chains of operations that might go very deep, even though any given unit of that chain is not that hard to understand. You're basically composing all of these things that we saw Dilshan do in real time. And by the way, that's very difficult to do. Everybody here knows that. And if you don't know that yet, you'll learn soon. Live demoing code is very difficult. So as we saw in real time, right, we kind of saw you go back and forth, build up each unit of operation, and it's stringing them together where the complexity actually lay, in my opinion. So I just wanted to add on top of what Dilshan just said.